This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about the keys to victory today to beat the Vikings. And also, also, Justin Jefferson won his revenge game because he damn sure ain't get it last game. But let's get straight into it. Listen. Can you hear it? From the rooftops, the streets. Forgotten tunnels beneath our feet. United as one. We rise. Our forces together. All right, so before we get into the news, shout out to Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm Jenkins will be the honorary captain tomorrow night. Well, not tomorrow night, today. I got this from yesterday. Um, so I guess he'll be out there doing coin toss, the home opener. Who's a better guy to bring than Malcolm Jenkins helped us get our first ring? Um, a, a very great safety leader definitely a leader i really hope sydney brown while he together just pick his brain a bit especially on the leadership side of things michael jenkins was a great leader and a great player now question i have to ask michael jenkins can can you can you suit up you know just suit up play beside sydney brown you know all right all jokes man hopefully these safeties and stuff get it together but let's get let's get into the Keys to victory. Keys to victory. So let's start on the yeah, let's start on the offensive side of the ball. Offensive side of the ball is really don't don't be afraid to be aggressive. The weather is going to be nice. Um Minnesota is definitely going to bring the blitz for sure. And we got to find a way to combat it. And you have to find a way to get Dallas Goddard involved. I know that was week one. He did somewhat the same thing week one last year with Devontae Smith. Then Devontae Smith didn't go a game without a catch. So I think we try to get Dallas Goddard the ball early. I think we go with like a tight end screen or something like that. I won't be surprised if that's the first play, like a play action or some type of screen to Dallas Goddard just to give him, get him warmed up. Because Dallas Goddard is a guy I have – in my prediction, getting at least seven, eight hundred yards. So Brian Johnson got to find a way to get him the ball. Um, another on offense is that uh, Jordan Malata and Lane Johnson they need that game where they could show their dominance. You know, outsiders have their doubts, but I don't. I believe they pick it up, but they got to dominate and give Jalen Hurts time because Jalen Hurts, even according to the stats. He, in a bad pocket and a, under a lot of pressure, he still showed he's the most accurate quarterback in the league. He was 20 or 26 from the pocket. So try to give him a clean pocket. Um, A lot of people say Cam Jurgens was getting beat up. I, I really didn't see it. Of course, I've seen hiccups here and there, but I really didn't see it. But I guess Cam Jurgens, second game, he'll get better. You know, he's not going against the best defensive line, one of the best defensive line in the league and the Patriots. So he should uh, step it up on the offensive side. Yeah, it's not too much. And the play calling, the play calling got to be better. You know, it, it definitely have to be better. Um, Defensive side, young guys got to step up. The young guys got to step up. Josh Joe. I said this in my last video. We need you playing your best football. We're talking about a top five duo we're going up against right now, Addison and Justin Jefferson, and a guy in Justin Jefferson that is heated with us. And let's not act like Justin Jefferson can't be stopped, right? So a lot of people kept telling me, like, he had 150 yards, this and that, right? So I happened to, oh, this is the injury report. See right here. Forgot to go over this. 
James Bradbury out, Reed Blankenship out, Kenny G out for sure, and Fletcher Cox is questionable. But let me go back to uh, Justin Jefferson. So this is his numbers by the half. So first half, he went berserk. Can't lie. Seven catches, 138 yards, averaging 19.7 yards per catch. I'm not sure why they put the last two minutes of the half there, okay? Really a moot point. But the second half, he had two catches for 12 yards. Two catches for 12 yards. So we had to really look at the tape as far as on the second half. What happened? How did Tampa Bay shut him down the second half? How did they adjust to Justin Jefferson? Because, yes, total 150 yards, awesome. But 12 yards in one half, something, something the Buccaneers did shut him down. They shut him down. And I believe it's possible to shut Justin Jefferson down. I believe it is. So um, don't act like he's some unbeatable guy. Slay did it last game. Days did it. We seen him against top tier cornerbacks and he just couldn't get it right. J Jair Alexander did it. But I got to trust that Sean Desai is going to line up Slay at least most of the times, if not all the time against Justin Jefferson, because you don't have James Bradbury. You don't want Job on Justin Jefferson. Bad enough, Job probably got to deal with Addison. He's a different monster because he's so fast. I think he clocked the fastest time on the field. Uh, last week like he ran like 19 and a half miles per hour you know that next gen stat crazy stuff so he bad enough he got to deal with him you don't really want him following justin jefferson either uh, unless it's gonna be a cook cook day for uh josh jewel so um again justin jefferson's not a world beater in my opinion he's no randy moss he's no megatron anything like that in my opinion, he's no Tyreek Hill or anything like that. Justin Jefferson can be stopped. All right. Um, I think I said this too, as far as the offensive side. Of course, I'm a little all over the place. But this is what we're going to be lined up against. I'm going to go back to the offensive side. The Minnesota Vikings like to line up in dime personnel and blitz. I believe they blitz about 52% of the time last week. So that's almost half the plays. And one of the things we struggle against, even last year with Shane Steichen, was the blitz. And then not only that they're going to blitz, they're going to keep corners out there who are fast. So with Jalen Hurts or even our running backs, they can't really escape to the outside like that. Or Jalen Hurts, it's going to be hard for them to avoid the blitz. Whereas though like a nickel cornerback is chasing them instead of a defensive lineman or linebacker chasing them. So they're going to show that that personnel, this one, they're going to show this a lot. So we're going to have to find a way to combat it. And just going back to the offense, Brian Johnson got to find a way to get Dallas Goddard involved to avoid that, get the screen game going to avoid that. All right. But yeah, again, back to the defense. I mentioned Josh Joel. Next guy, whoever is at safety, if it's Edmonds and Evans, if it's Sidney Brown and Edmonds or Sidney Brown and Evans, we need them playing their best game ever. I feel bad for Sidney Brown because this is the game that he got to show and prove against top top tier receivers. But, hey, it happens. That's why we got a deep roster. That's exactly why we got a deep roster. So, Sidney Brown. Same thing I said about Josh Job. He got to play his best football ever. And I watched his tape against, well, not against, playing for Illinois. He was really, really good. Nice ball hawk. He got to slow down just a little bit. He got to just slow down just a little bit. And once he get his feet wet and stuff, I believe the game will flow to him. But he, he has to really rely on our defensive front getting there. He had to rely on Slay and Joe a lot as far as in the Sidney Brown and the safeties because if they're getting beat or the pressure's not getting there like it's supposed to, it might be a long day for whoever's the safety. So we need that defensive line to get there to speed up Kirk Cousins' clock. We need our corners to play really, really well and the Slay, Joe, and Avante Maddox to make it easier on the safeties because the safeties can easily be 
exploited, in my opinion. Bad enough, we got backup <laughs> linebackers. I, I'm not sure what lineup we're going with that, but there, but there's a lot of um, things we got to do on the defensive side. And I just mentioned the players. Hopefully, Sean Desai got the communication right. Hopefully, he's calling, sending the right place to the Ellis's of the world because last game when the Kobe Dean got hurt, it was Reed Blankenship and Chris and Ellis like calling the plays. But you don't, you don't have Reed Blankenship to call the plays. So we got to really trust Chris and Ellis. Know what he's doing, and. Man, if not, I'm telling you, that, that defense scared me. Because if that defense don't show up a little bit or at least don't get a stop, we're going to have to trust Jalen Hurts to shoot it out. And we're going to have to trust Brian Johnson. Like, look, the defense struggling today. We got to keep the ball out their hands. Like, we got to prolong getting the touchdown. Run like five, six minutes off the clock and get the touchdown so they don't have so much time to score again. So it's either going to go that way, a shootout, or, man, it could be bad for us. Like, we, if we don't, if the defense don't get stops and the offense is struggling, I'm telling you, man, it's going to be a bad day. But I doubt that's going to happen. I doubt that's going to happen because Minnesota didn't look the best either. And they missing a couple guys. But... If our defense, again, don't get the stops that they're supposed to, don't do the things they that they supposed to, and don't make adjustments like how Tampa Bay did, it's going to be a, a long day. So these rookie coordinators need to step up. Need to step up. Big time. Big, big, big time. All right. I guess lastly, I want to get into the last segment of the day is uh, Justin Jefferson want revenge. He want revenge. It's two wide receivers that will forever want revenge against the Eagles. It's DK Metcalf and Justin Jefferson. But let me go ahead and play this clip. Another uh, matchup against Darius Slay. I'm always excited to to have those type of matchups. Definitely, you know, we we, we have some some things we got to get back on on them on. You know, just having the loss last year, just not having those plays that we wanted last year. Uh, so it, it's it's definitely you know some some tension going. On. All right, so you heard him. He it's gonna be tension. He want revenge. He want to win this game. And unfortunately, Justin Jefferson, not this one. It ain't happening. I believe it's gonna be close, but it ain't happening. We're getting this win. As much as we won and y'all lost last week, it felt like a loss to us. So we're gonna come out there like we lost to the Patriots. And. You're not getting a revenge, bro. You're not getting a revenge, bro. I'm telling you, man. You're, you're not getting it. Eagles win this game. Close battle. I'm hoping it's not a shootout. But if it is, I believe it hurts over Kirk Cousins. I believe it hurts over Kirk Cousins, man. Because Kirk Cousins, prime time, he's going to give you one or two. He's going to give you one or two interceptions or something. He's going to give you a turnover. Jalen Hurts plays some clean football, which he's capable of doing. We could get the dub. We can get the dub. So sorry to break it to you, man. You ain't getting it. But hey, man, what do you think and how do you feel about what Justin Jefferson said? Keys of victory, all that good stuff, Malcolm Jenkins. But this is Eagle Al, man. I'm up.